the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, starting from verse 10. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Yahweh Shai also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Akakudash. I want to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught us his truth and who do rule well. And I also want to say peace, blessings, and salutations unto the sincere brothers pushing his truth throughout the four corners of the earth that are given all diligence to ensure their calling of election. Okay, the point uh, being was verse 14, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come, you know, and even just putting, putting, you know, uh, and we, you know, just a, a figure of speech, putting the scriptures aside for one second, just looking at the condition of this place, the whole earth, let alone America, okay, just looking at the, uh, you know, the emissions, the polluted air, the polluted uh, ocean, you know, uh, deforestation, okay, you know, what is the expected end of this place, man? Just looking at those things, okay? How it's governed and ran, you know? Looking at how, uh, you know, I mean, what good is going to come from, uh, you know, nuclear weapons of mass destruction being in the in the hands of every major nation? What, what good is going to come from that, you know? Okay, so, you know, as the scripture said, man, when the, when the wicked are in rulership, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, you know. Hey, and, and, and this kingdom is being brought to naught, man, you know. If you just go on Google and type in average age of an empire, the average age of an of a, of a empire, all right, <clears throat> is roughly 250 years. With that being said, okay, America being uh, quote unquote founded, <laughs> you know, in 1776, okay, their Independence Day, as they like to call it, that tells you that what? Salaki, excuse me. <coughs> that tells you what? That 2026 is 220 or 250 years, okay? Which is beautiful, man. Seeing the prophecy, seeing the times that we're coming into, okay? It's exciting, man. All right? Talk about the RFID chip, you know, which is the mark of the beast. Talk about mandatory vaccines, you know, lockdowns coming back into effect. You know, 2021 is going to be lit. You know what I mean? And I say that vainly speaking because we know the seriousness of it. But for us, man, we're rejoicing in these times, man. You know, we're rejoicing, and, and we know, you know, we don't know what end it'll be for us, okay? But at the end of the day, man, we're hastening, hastening the day, as the scripture has said, man. All right, we're hastening the return of Yahweh Shai, man. We want a righteous kingdom to be re-established uh, here on the earth, man. All right, and through the spirit, okay, the Akim are pushing this word throughout the four corners of the earth, Waking up the elect, okay, waking up the lost sheep and, uh, you know, feeding them daily, okay? Not letting them go astray. No, but guiding them back into, okay, the fold, right? So through the Spirit, man, we're manifesting the kingdom of heaven, you know, with this very first uh, uh, step, if you will, you know? We do it. We keep doing our part. The Lord is definitely going to uh, uh, do what he said he was going to do. You know? And, and you know, like it says, man, okay? Because it says without the camp, you know? Let us go there. Uh, verse 13, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach, you know? And that's the whole part of this walk, bro, is, is, is walking, you know, as a follower you know, trying to fill the shoes of our big brother, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, man. Because he is our brother, man. That's our blood, you know. He came out of the tribe of Judah. 
you know? So with that being said, man, you know, here we have no continuing city. It's evident, man. So, hey, like the scripture has said, what? Let's grab that. Book of Matthew. Chapter 6. Okay, I think there's one down here. No, that's not what I want. Verse, uh, Eight or 19, it says, <clears throat> Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth, does, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, right? These tangible things, these, these uh, you know, uh, temporary things, right? It says, But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal, right? The incorruptible, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, so all the things to come, you know, uh, it, it it man it over overpowers in comparison. You know the things that we may have to endure and face on this side. Okay, this this uh, temporary uh, sacrifice. You know, this reasonable service, right? This this reasonable sacrifice. But the things that are going to come, like what? Okay. Being fully emerged in the new covenant. Because a lot of people don't understand, okay, that right now it's pretty much like we have one foot in the old covenant and one foot in the new covenant. All right. Because, okay, just to, just for edification purposes, if you, if, you, if you didn't, if the old covenant was still a thing, which, which was established on what? The law. Okay. And we know 1 John 3 and 4 says that sin is the transgression of the law. Therefore, we would be perfect or that sin would be done away with. But that's not what, what's written in the scriptures. That's not what, what it says. Okay. It says sin will be done away with when the kingdom of heaven is reestablished. All right. At least for the Israelite nation, you know, who, whom the world is ultimately made for. All right. But... um. You know, that's how you know that the old covenant is still in play, man, because the law is still here. If sin is still here, that means the law is still here, right? Because sin is the transgression of the law. So therefore, you know, two and two have to go together, man. One plus one equals two. Two plus two equals four, you know? It's simple math. All right. Let's see. Let's get that in Hebrews 8. And, um... Six, okay, it says, For now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by whom much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. That mediator is Yahweh Shai. Okay, he's our mediator. He's our head, you know. And Israel always had, a, you know, a, a mediator, man. Okay, you had a Melchizedek, okay, the high priest. Okay, you had Moses. Okay, you had, you had, you know, a head, man. All right. It says, verse 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Right? For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay? And, and, and you know, we're, we're in a in a you know, beginning stages of the new covenant and the end stages of the old. Okay, that's what I meant by we have one one foot in the old, okay, because there's still prophecy in the Old Testament that hasn't been fulfilled. And that's ultimately what we're waiting on is ultimately the downfall of Esau, Edom, and his kingdom here right now in wickedness, okay, and the restoration of the kingdom of heaven, the restoring of the righteous kingdom, okay, the kingdom of the Israelites, where we're going to, the earth is going to rejoice, man. The animals are going to be happy, Peace and balance and, and, and sound uh, moves, okay, so to speak, are going to be made uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the kingdom of the Israelites, man. You know, we're going we're gonna to operate in that righteous fashion because the law, stations, and commandments are going to be put in our inward parts. And we're going to show these heathen 
what a righteous rulership actually look like, looks like. And they're going to be subject into the law, statutes, and commandments because they're going into captivity for all that they've done. Now, eventually, after they finish, do their term, right? Because it's just like uh, you, when you read in Exodus about, uh, um, you know, the, the, the laws when it comes to having a servant. Okay, a servant was uh, was uh, like a seven year uh, contract type deal. Okay, but then if he wanted to, uh, um, you know, continue on after that seven years, uh, you know, I believe he'd be a slave for life. But uh, I mean, a servant for life. I don't want to say a slave, but he'll receive a ool, which is like uh, when you look at the uh, factory farming, how they have the yellow tags on the cow's ears or the or the sheep's ears. <laughs> And that's how they'll do you. They'll they'll tag you basically as as a mark, right? As a uh, you know, uh, an identifying uh, thing, you know. <laughs> but just as that was just for seven years, okay, and then he could you know he get out his contract, he receives everything back, his land, his you know every all his possessions, okay. Hey, when the, when the kingdom of heaven is established and these heathens go into captivity, there's going to be an end for it. Okay, we know Esau, Edom being the wicked, okay, them being at the top right now, ruling this planet in wickedness and, and, and whoredom, okay, vain philosophies and, and, and you know, all types of uh, wickedness, all right, they're going to be at the very bottom of all the heathen nations in the kingdom of heaven. And unto them is promised a thousand years of hardcore slavery. And then they're being exterminated from the face of the earth, you know, because ultimately their only role was to put the Israelites in captivity and, and rule this planet in the fashion that they're doing today, which is in wickedness, allowing homosexuals to walk about when that's against the scriptures, when that's against righteousness in the eyes of the, of the most high. OK, that's not going to fly in the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be like that in the kingdom of heaven. OK, you know, unrighteous judgments, man, people getting let off easy. You know, no, in the kingdom of heaven, so, uh, if you catch somebody, you know, touching a little girl or something, a heathen touching a little girl, because like I said, the Israelites are going to be made perfect. OK. But you see those heathens doing what they do. Guess what? He getting stoned to death in the street. OK, it's going to be harsh measures implemented again, man, because that's you, people going to have to come around and watch that happen, man. So they could get the point. That this is not a fucking game, you know? And the Lord's going to use us to put that fear in them, man. <laughs> okay. But we're going to get those new bodies, okay? We're going to be translated, you know? Hey, we're going to be made gods again, man. At Psalms 82 and 6, I have said, yeah, are gods, you know? We see, you know, even going back to that verse 5, let's go grab it real quick. Psalms uh, 82 in verse uh, 5. Okay, it says, they know not, neither will they understand. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard to get, bro. You know, it's what the scripture says. And just looking at how this kingdom is operated, who in the right state of their, you know, who in their right state of mind will want it to continue on, man. We know that the earth is going to abide forever. So it's not going to be the whole world taken out. No, it's going to be a change of management. Okay. New management is going to take over. All right. So it says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course, you know, and, and these people are oblivious. You know. Why would you want this place to continue on, man? Okay, verse 6, I have said, yeah, are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Yeah, all of Israel is children of Yahweh Basim Yahshai, man, Yasharala. That's what that means in the Hebrew, Israel, Yasharala. He, Prince Power, or you the sons of the, of the living power, the sons of the Most High, okay? It says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. And yeah, we're in this flesh, man. We're not in those new bodies. We're not made perfect yet. But when we are made perfect... You know, because the scripture says what? That the wages of sin is death, okay? So if we can't sin anymore, guess what? We're not going to die no more. We're going to be made gods again, man, okay? Which we're going to be like many powers. That's all that means. We're going to be powers under the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai. Just like the angels are powers under his control. Just like Yahweh Shai is, 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 the, is the head power 
under the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's control. You know, it's every, the Heavenly Father deals with order. He said, let everything be done decently and in order, man. You know, because where you don't have order, you have what? Chaos. And the Most High don't operate like that. Neither, neither is he the author of confusion, you know. It says, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. And that's right, bro, you know. But going back to Hebrews 8, let's finish that out. Okay, verse 7. Okay, verse 8, it says, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not all nations, okay? With Israel and Judah. That's all it says, man. So I'm trying to put other shit in here, man, just because you read some other scriptures. That don't align with what he said right here, man. Okay, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. And also you can find this, all right, because this is being read out of Jeremiah 31 and 31. Go to Jeremiah 31 and 31, and it says the exact same thing pretty much. It says, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is my covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. All right. So the new covenant, okay, is in route, which is the kingdom of heaven being restored, okay, that great restoration, okay, and you know, these heathen are talking about, these, these wicked elites in the media talking about the great reset, okay, because they want their new world order to be implemented so they can take out the Israelites, bring them back down, okay, but that's not going to happen, all right, you allowed us too, too much of a uh, window of opportunity to do what we needed to do, and, and now the Heavenly Father is like, okay, that's it, you know. That's it. And your and your and your kingdom, queendom is 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 swirling down the drain right now, man. Hey, as the scripture has said, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, you know. Verse eleven, it says, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, know the Lord, right? We're not going to have to be on the highways and hedges no more. Why? Because it's going to be put in our, our inward parts, our mind and heart. Okay, it says, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. All Israel is going to know the most high. All the heathen too. But for us, we're going to be made perfect. All right, we're going to be made back into, you know, those, uh, um, you know, those, uh, uh, in those new bodies, man. All right. <coughs> It says, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. You know, it's ready to vanish away. Okay. That, that, that old covenant, you know, so to speak, is ready. All right. And in the, in the, all the works of the earth up until that point, you know. Because scripture talks about it's going to be like a dream, man. We're, it's, when we get in the kingdom of heaven, it's, all this shit that we had to go through, these different lifespans, these, these uh, you know, many things, with trials and tribulations we face on this side in this flesh, it's going to be like a dream, man. You know, it's going to be like a bad dream, okay? Now, backing up what I said about um, uh slavery in the kingdom of heaven okay this is isaiah chapter 1 verse 14 it's first it says for the lord will have mercy on jacob okay jacob being the nation of israel and will yet choose israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of jacob and those strangers are uh the israelite foreigners okay because you got Israelites scattered into all four corners of the earth. They're going to come looking like different nations. All right. Might look Japanese. Might look completely uh, like an Edomite. Might look completely like an Ishmaelite. Okay. But through the sea line of their father, it goes all the way back to, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel. Okay. It says, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. 
right? It's going to be that we're going to be reunited, basically. It says, And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, okay? And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors, okay? So we're going to take these other heathen nations and bring them back down, especially you Edomites, you so-called white people. That's what the scripture says, man. That's what's going to happen, all right? Isaiah 55 and 11, man, okay? The word that goes forth out of the Lord's mouth shall surely come to pass. You know, it's not going to return unto him void. It's not an empty promise. No, it's going to accomplish that which he pleases, okay? Verse 3, and it shall come to pass in that in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, right? That, that rest, okay, the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're looking forward to, man. The restoration, a righteous rulership. What's wrong with you people, man? It says, give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve, right? It says that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, okay? And say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased, okay? And when you go read Revelation 17, you know, Babylon, okay, the great is likened unto, okay, uh, that golden city, man, okay? It's likened unto, uh, you know, having that golden cup full of abominations. All right, it says, the Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and non-hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing, you know, and that's what we waiting for, bro. <laughs> you know, you got to imagine it's going to be like, like, man, we're looking for that, that day, all right, where it's going to be like the first day of heaven, you know. I mean, the first day of uh, uh, the earth being re uh, built, you know, like the beginning, bro. Can you imagine the freshness of the air, the freshness of the water, the freshness and cleanness and just the whole different vibration and frequency that the earth is going to give off? Okay, the animals being back in subjection unto us, right? You could, you could, you know, have, we're, with the new bodies, we're going to be able to do anything, man. They, the, the Lord said he's going to give his, his men his, their heart desires, man. Okay, of course, in righteousness. But those are the things that we look forward to, man. <coughs> Not continuing to work a fucking nine to five, a nine to nine, you know, a midnight to, to 10 in the morning job for the rest of our lives. Five days a week, six days a week. Some Saturdays, every other Saturday, you know, we're not looking forward to that, man. So fuck it, you know what I mean? Whatever we have to go through on this side, man, it, you know, hey, ultimately scripture says that death, they, they, they be, uh, be dead or better than they which still, uh, you know, are here, man. Because in the times that we're coming to, man, you, you gonna wish you was dead. But the Lord going to have it in his power, okay, to not, not allow that to happen. You know, a lot of people are going to take their lives, don't get me wrong. But for the ones that, that he wants to make, you know, uh, you know, really punish on that level, he, they best believe that's going to happen. All right. Let's see. Second Corinthians. Oops. Alright. Alright, this is a uh, Second Corinthians four. Ooh, this is hard. Uh four and um seven. Okay, it says, But we have the treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us, right? That's why we always give all praise, honor, and glory unto him. In the name of his only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because this is all of him, man. This is all of him. You know, this is all from him. Okay? These are all gifts. And, uh, man, we're just trying to fulfill our lot, you know? 
It says, uh, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed, right? It says, always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our body. And that's right, bro. We're, we're supposed to be, you know, followers of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, not, uh, Yahweh Shai wasn't fucking with everybody. Yahweh Shai, uh, wasn't, wasn't, uh, you know, one in Rome to, uh, you know, stick around forever, you know? Yahweh Shai told you he's not coming to send peace on earth, but a sword coming to set man against variance or at variance against his father, all right? Against his mother, against his family, his friends. All right, let's grab this Revelation um, 14. Okay, in verse 4. Okay, actually, uh, start, start at verse 1. Okay, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. Okay, and this, uh, this lamb is Yahweh Shai. And mountains, okay, Mount Zion is, of course, he's the head of Israel, but Mount, okay, ultimately going into, uh, uh, summit, okay, which is a uh, a form of government, okay, basically a government, because that governing body is the one hundred and forty four thousand, which you're about to read about, and with him, a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads, right, receiving that mark of exemption, okay, receiving those new bodies, being the first fruits, okay, of the kingdom of heaven. It says, and I've heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, okay. And as the voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpings or harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Right. To re be redeemed. OK. You know, that's that's Israel. I mean, that's uh, it's like that's Yahweh Shai, bro. Our redeemer, you know. And the elect simultaneously, while all this hell is breaking loose, okay, are going to get beamed up out of this place at the sound of the last trumpet. You know, just as the nukes are about to hit, hit the, the rest of the people that are left here in, you know. It says, these are they which are, were not defiled with women, okay, and the women ultimately uh, being defiled with women, for they are virgins, okay, is ultimately going into us being pure, okay, not, not uh, being defiled okay with uh you know christianity and, and man's traditions and man-made man philosophies and doctrines no but subscribing to the scriptures and the things that we were taught okay it says these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto yahweh and to the lamb yahweh shai and in their mouth was found no guile for they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh. Yeah, our, our good. Okay, Lord willing, we're a part of that number. I say that vainly, right? But the elect, okay, they're the good that they did, okay? The works and the faith that they kept until the end that allowed them to escape the said perils, okay? You know, what did Apostle Paul say? You know, that, the, that our sins may be blotted out, okay? They the ones that repented truly and came back to the Lord. And therefore the good and the and the works and the faith outweigh the bad that they've done, the mistakes that they've made. You know? And they went from unworthy to worthy in the eyes of, you know, the only person that really matters. Yahweh why Yahweh Shai. Okay. But going back to first uh second Corinthians four. All right. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake, that the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Right? So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that the, he that which raised up the Lord Yahweh Shai 
shall raise up us also by Yahweh Shai, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of Yahweh, for which cause we faint not. Okay, so, you know, we're sick of this place, vexed, uh, some days more than others, some days heavy, heavily vexed in this place. Okay, you might, you might be on a, a, a couple days streak, so to speak. Okay, but this, you know, we know this place sucks, but it's just part of the process, man. You know, we just got to keep on keeping on, man. Keep on hastening the day, keep on doing what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so like it says, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And we're, that's what we're doing day by day, man. We're storing up our treasures where they belong in the kingdom of heaven, man, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. Okay. It says, okay, uh, for our light affliction, which that's what, all that this is. Like I said, it's going to be like we woke up from a dream when the kingdom of heaven is reestablished. It's going to be like we woke up from a bad dream, you know, a light affliction, which is but for a moment, okay, for a temporary moment, okay, it says, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And we're talking, it says eternal, man. It's how you know we're going to be gods, man. We're going to be put back on top, man, and we're going to rule the earth in righteousness, Okay, it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, okay, temporary, tangible. They don't last forever. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay. So, you know, with all that's going on in the world, with all the unrighteous decrees being allowed and, and pushed forward, okay, you know, you see things on a daily basis that just rub you wrong. Just rub your spirit wrong. Okay. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing, Akim. You know. Keep pushing. I know we fall. Okay. I know we fall short, man. We, we make mistakes. Okay. But keep on, man. Keep, you know, get back up when you fall. All right. Scripture says the just man falleth seven times. Keep fighting a good fight, man. Because look, bro, we are almost out this motherfucker, man. And we're looking forward to that restoration, man. The restoring of our kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness. Okay. So Lord willing, this was uplifting and edifying, okay, and exhorting. I want to end it off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash. I want to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who taught us his truth and who do real well. And I also want to say peace, blessings, and salutations unto the sincere I can push this word throughout the four corners of the earth that are given all diligence to ensure their calling of election. Until next time, I say Shalom.